Okay, so when you open up your cuts a lot, um, if you haven't purchased a registration yet, then you'll have to bypass it and continue in trial mode. And remember that in trial mode, you only have 15 days and it will put two cuts through your design cut, you know, through whatever your design that you're using called a watermark cut. So anyway, uh, to set it up, you're going to go to Cutter, My Cutter, and Manage Cutters. And then from this drop-down menu over here on the right, you will scroll down and you will find um, the lock lip, which is right there. Select that <clears throat> and then click on Add to List. And of course, I already have it over here, so it's already done. But you'll see it show up now over here on the left. And you can have other cutters, you know, depending on whatever cutters, you know, you, uh, you own. Then click on Done. <clears throat> then over here on the Document Panel, in this mat size, initially it's going to be 12 by 12, which does match the mat that you're using. I personally, when I do print and cuts, I prefer my mat size to represent uh, the printout that I'm putting on there. And so you can do it either way. It, it's totally optional. It, you don't have to make any other changes. It's just, you know, it's just kind of known that that you will be placing this, what represents the printout, up in the upper left corner of the mat. So then, um, let's come back over here. So over here, I have um, I added an arrow from the library, okay? And that's uh, right here under the library. And then <clears throat> over on the this panel here, this, this document panel, you can turn on show reg marks and show print margins. Now for the reg marks, you do not have to turn these on. This is just for your convenience to be able to confirm that yes, those are the reg marks, that's what's gonna print. And then up here, I can see that the reg marks fit within the, the printer boundaries. Again, you don't have to do that other than you wanna make sure you see your printer boundaries and it tends to kind of match this eight and a half by 11. That's another reason I do it. It's just kind of convenient to kind of make sure that everything looks right to me. Okay, so to print, first go to File, <clears throat> Print Setup, and then make sure that everything looks correct here. If you want to do anything with your printer uh, properties, then you would click on Properties. And, of course, whatever printer you have, you'd have various settings show up here. Um, of course, you know, since you're just, if you're starting off with copy paper, which you should be using copy paper, you just use, you know, whatever mode you want to, just normal. Um, and then... From, and then from there, once you make sure the setup looks right, and again, this dashed line should show you where the printer margins are based on your printer settings. Then you go to File, Print, and then you make sure to mark this option, Print Registration Marks. Make sure that's checked so that you'll get these registration marks, and then click on OK, and it'll print your printout. Okay, so then on the cutting mat itself, you can see I have the printout here, and you want to make sure it's aligned right up here with the very corner of the grid, okay? And then you're ready to load the mat. And then to load the mat, um, come down here, and you, there's um, there's like these little, um, this is where the corner is gonna go on the left and the corner on the right of the mat. And I may have to set the mat things down. Let me see how well I can do this while holding the phone. Put it in there and there, okay. So I got it, so now then, basically I have make sure that each corner is tucked under those guides and then at the very bottom I have my hand and I'm just kind of pushing up on it until I can't push any further right so it's just sitting there now that I'm going to come over to the control panel and I'm going to press the third button down and when I do that it's going to load the mat if it doesn't load the mat then just try pressing it again sometimes I have to press it twice for whatever reason so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put the phone down so I can do that. When I did that, it went ahead and it just rolled the mat forward to a location that it, it chooses. And this is where at the point, um, with many cutters, I'm sure that's why the developer put it in there, many cutters, there's usually arrow keys that allow you to move the mat in and out yourself or move the blade carriage left and right. But you don't have to do that with the lock, lock lick. It's all automatic. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I have no idea how to pronounce this cutter. I just bought one so that I could help people with your cuts a lot. Um, <clears throat> so anyway... Um, um, so now then it's ready. So now I'm going to stop this part and go back to software. Okay, so now in the software, I click on this cutter button at the top. And of course, you know, I can see that it says, you know, I've got the correct cutter selected. <clears throat> I've got my connection. I'm using USB for now. I haven't set up Bluetooth, so I'm just using USB. For cut mode, leave it at WYSIWYG. And then you'll have this mark, use software speed and force. And then down here is where you can put in your force. The score force is only if you want to cut a certain part at a lower force. So don't worry about that. You're only, this is where you're going to enter your force. I'm using 3.5, which worked great for me with copy paper. 
Um, I will give a warning that the mat is extremely sticky. So I literally took my bathrobe, my fluffy bathrobe, and I pressed it and pulled it up, pressed it and pulled it up about 15 times on the mat before I felt comfortable using copy paper on it. Um, and then <clears throat> I also recommend for calibrating, use the lowest speed possible because that's going to give you the most accurate results. Then when I'm ready to send this for the print and cut, I click on this print and cut button at the bottom. So in this window, you'll see this print button, <clears throat> and this is the alternative where I could have printed if I'd wanted to. So you have a choice, file print, or you can click on this print button, and you basically get the same window. Again, verify you have print registration marks and change any properties you want to or whatever. And then uh, before you go any further, then click on this calibrate laser. Initially, your values for X and Y will most likely be zero, zero. That's what they should be. And then basically what you then do, the purpose of this window, is to tweak those values away from zero, zero as needed so that your cut line is where you want it relative to your print line. So, and then over here are the instructions. And so, like I said, th these are correct. These right now in the version of SCAL 6.056, these need to be reversed. In other words, when this says, if it cuts below, add to the Y value, what you need to do if it cuts below, you need to subtract from the Y value. And same thing, if it cuts above, then you would add to the Y value. So just reverse those if you're using 6.056. And then hopefully that's going to be corrected in the next update. Um, <clears throat> one thing to keep in mind um, with this is that you don't want to make big changes. You don't want to make too small a changes. So the smallest change to make is 0.1. The lock lick isn't any better than that in terms of repeatability. So you might, you know, just if you make a change of 0.05, you may or may not even see a difference. You may not even get a difference, you know, and then the next one you do will be off the other direction. Okay, wait, what happened? So stick to 0.1 changes and then, and don't forget, you know, this is negative. My values both started out negative, okay? So I had to subtract in both cases in order to get the cut lines closer to the print lines. Um, <clears throat> um, so if you, you know, done your, test and you need to come here and make values, always click on save. But then remember the next time you come in here, you're going to be back in inches again. So you'll need to come back here and change to millimeters um, in order to work in metric. So always verify that. And then and again, as I had posted on the group, it's a good idea to write these numbers down on your printout so that you can see what you've already tested. And then, you know, that, that will help you so you're not repeating the same numbers over and over again. Okay. And then at this point, you're ready, and I'm going to click on Start Scan. And when I click on Start Scan, you'll, I'll, I'll switch over so you can see what the, what's happening on the machine. Okay, so you can see it's moving over to the left. And then what it's doing is scanning along the, um, the, the, the horizontal line of it and then the vertical line of the registration mark. <clears throat> then it comes down and it does the same thing to the second one. And again, this is all built into the firmware on the cutter. There's nothing that uh, has to be done as your cuts a lot to make this happen. It's all automatic. Okay. And then it comes up here, and then it makes an adjustment, probably makes an adjustment to the blade exposure. I'm not really sure. And then it comes down, and then it's going to cut out the arrow. And then based on how that arrow looks, you will then be able to determine whether you need to change X or Y or both, probably both, and then by how much you think. And again, since you're starting, if you start with my values, you probably are only going to be changing it by 0.1 or 0.2 of a millimeter. It shouldn't be very much. So then back in shortcuts a lot, you'll print out another printout. <clears throat> Same way you go to file print, or you can do it um, from you know the print plus cut window. You can click on print here. And then again, you click on calibrate laser, and then go to mid millimeters and then make your adjustments, you know, whichever direction you need to make it according to the instructions. Again, remembering that this has been, this is the opposite of the way it should go. Um, and I think that's it. And if you need any help, please let me know. I'm always happy to help.